What does it mean to be a woman? This is a question asked for every new place in time we explore in history class, and the answer is almost always the same. Oppressed, underestimated, homemakers, mothers. I think sexism wins the award for the most continuous continuity of history. And for someone who loves learning about women historical figures, I hate thinking about it. So when I learned about the Trung sisters, two revolutionaries from early Vietnam, and found out that this place and time had a different answer to the question of womanhood, I thought I'd found my perfect corner of history. Ironically, this story was the one that got me thinking about sexism and what it means to be a woman today. The Chung sisters are celebrated as heroes in Vietnam because of their successful rebellion against Han Chinese control back in 40 CE, 2,000 years ago. As the story goes, they were born into a noble family in northern Vietnam and grew up learning military skills that would come into good use when laws and taxes imposed by the Chinese governor of the area angered the Vietnamese people. Chung Trak and Chung Ni brought the peasants and nobles together and led a revolt against this governor. They defeated him and went on to drive the Chinese military forces out of Vietnam. Chung Trak was crowned queen and ruled the kingdom for a couple years until the Chinese military returned at full force. The sisters died, and the Chinese took over. But although they ultimately lost, Trung Trak and Trung Ni have become symbols of independence in Vietnam, and some historians even credit them with the perseverance of Vietnam's national identity throughout centuries of foreign control. So what makes this my perfect corner of history? It's likely that early Vietnam was a matrilineal society in which women had freedoms and important roles, and leading a country would not have been an odd thing for Trung Trak to do. Chinese control was a threat to that reality because women were seen as subordinate in Chinese culture at the time. Prior to the revolt, some of the laws that the governor tried to instate would strip Vietnamese women of their right to inherit property, something one of my sources theorized could have been a motive for Trung Trak. So in a way, it's like the Trung sisters fought not just for the freedom of Vietnam, but for their rights as women. But the thing is, they didn't win that fight. After the Chinese took over, women's roles in society changed and the memory of the Trung sisters changed too. There were retellings that were obvious in the way that they were influenced by gender roles. For example, an early 1900s play takes away the Trung sisters' agency by placing Trung Trak's husband as the initiator of the rebellion, her nephew as the troop commander, and Trung Trak spends the whole play either moping about how she, as a woman, has no chance of success against the Chinese or as queen, or grieving her dead husband, who was in this um, version her main reason for fighting. Some historians treated Chung Shrek's identity as a woman as the weakness that led to her downfall. Then there's retellings that were more subtle in this regard. Early historians praised the Chung sisters for their military skill, but also for their beauty. While Chinese sources from the time of the revolt say that Chung Shrek's husband followed her leadership, later Vietnamese sources say that he was killed by the Chinese governor possibly because they could not believe that Chung Trak would be the one leading the rebellion and later a kingdom if her husband was still alive. Many sources celebrate them by comparing them to their male peers. Take this quote. All the male heroes bowed their heads in submission. Only the two sisters proudly stood up to avenge the country. At first glance, I thought, yeah, girl power, girls rule, boys drool. But when you think about it, this quote suggests that the roles the Chung sisters took up in the rebellion should have belonged to men. These male heroes should have been the ones to stand up and defend the country, but instead they left the job of the two women. For shame. The subtle versions, especially the quote, remind me of how gender roles and expectations may pervade my life and the lives of my friends and family in a way that makes us forget they're there. Society's idea of womanhood is like a camera filter you don't realize you have on. A thousand years ago, Chung Trak was praised for her beauty, and months ago, a relative of mine was concerned about what Kamala Harris would wear to the vice presidential debate. So if we haven't got it all figured out yet, what is the world going to look like when we do? What is the right way when it comes to how women are portrayed in stories or seen in real life? We'll take two retellings of the Chung sister story that I think could be written today. A 1949 article in which the Chung sisters and their mother were the valiant heroes while men were portrayed as foolish or unskilled or completely absent. Then there's a 1993 children's history text in which both the men and women each have roles in the rebellion, and no difference in expectations for either gender is pointed out. 
Trim Track grieves for her husband, but fights for the love of her people at the same time. So, which one of these is the better version? Don't look at me, I don't know. There's still a likely chance that these sock didn't get executed, and the mother was definitely not the hero of the story when this all went down for real. So let's forget history for a moment. Heck, let's forget the sources. Is the more feminist story the one with independent all-female leads, or the one where men and women work together without any distinctions made between them? Do strong women stand among men or above them? Does it matter if they are masculine or feminine, wear dresses or pants, fulfill gender roles or disregard them completely? The only answer that comes to mind, the only right way I can think of, is the way without expectations. The way that's real. Without pedestals or tinted glasses. I have no idea what she was like. No one does. Because we have none of her words, no definitive answer for why she did what she did, no clue at all as to who she was as a person, and therefore, the true sisters were anyone the people telling their story wanted them to be. Each person to tell their tale dressed them in their own expectations and prejudices and author's purpose. There's no way to know how they would have wanted us to remember them, but we could think of the way we treat women public figures in comparison to men, the lessons we give to our daughters but not to our sons, the way we see people who don't identify as men or women. We could take off the blue and pink tinted glasses and get rid of expectations because the right answer for what it means to be a woman or man or neither or both is decided by every individual person.